what is the purpose of a muamua we don't know but uh, this indicates that it's possibly an artificial object Abi Loeb es catedrático de astrofísica en la Universidad de Harvard, pero sobre todo es conocido en el mundo por haber sido el descubridor de Oumuamua. ¿Qué es el Oumuamua? ¿Cuándo, dónde y por qué dio con él y por qué ha dedicado cinco años a investigarlo? En octubre de 2017, el primer objeto de fuera del sistema de solar fue descubierto cerca de la Tierra. Uh, by a telescope in Hawaii called the Pan Stars, and it was given the name Oumuamua, which means uh, a scout in the Hawaiian language. And at first, astronomers assumed that it must be a comet, but this object did not have a cometary tail. There was no gas or dust around it to a very tight limit um, that was obtained by the Spitzer Space Telescope. So it was definitely not a, a comet of the type we have seen. And then as it was tumbling, the amount of sunlight that was reflected from it changed by a factor of 10. And that meant that it's, it has a very extreme shape because the area projected on the sky was changing by a factor of 10 every eight hours. And the most likely at the 90% confidence level, the most likely fit to the variation of light every eight hours was that of a pancake shaped object, a flat object. Then it was pushed away uh, from the sun by an, a force in addition to the force of gravity acting on it. So it, there was a puzzle, what gives it this push? And I suggested it must be the reflection of sunlight. And for that, the object had to be very thin uh, and nature doesn't make thin objects. So I suggested it might be artificial. So what is the purpose? Of a muamua, we don't know, but uh, this indicates that it's possibly an artificial object. ¿Qué nos dice el Oumuamua sobre el universo? ¿Qué le ha dicho a usted? ¿Qué ha aprendido? ¿Y qué puede contarnos? I think it's, it offers a completely new way to search for extraterrestrial technological civilizations instead of what we've done for 70 years, which was to look for radio signals. That's just like trying to have a phone conversation. You need the counterpart to be active. Whereas uh, a better approach is to look for relics that uh, those civilizations left behind, sort of like archaeology, and uh, look for equipment that they sent into space, just like we sent the uh, Voyager, New Horizon, and so forth. And uh, to me, that's a frontier that was not yet explored, and there was no funding given to it until I established the Galileo project a month and a half ago. ¿Quién tiene que explorar el espacio? ¿Los hombres o las máquinas? Las máquinas que hacen los hombres. ¿Por qué? I think yeah. that our future in space is not sending humans. We now have artificial intelligence systems that we uh, develop to drive cars, to make decisions. Eventually they will outsmart us and they are made of electronics. We can send them to space that would survive for a billion years across uh, interstellar distances. And we, we should think of them just like our technological kids. You know, we should be proud of them rather than sending people. You know, we are sending something that represents us. Si hay tantas probabilidades de que haya vida en otros planetas, en miles de galaxias, ¿por qué no dicen nada? ¿Por qué hay tan pocas evidencias? Es la paradoja de Fermi, y usted ha tratado de resolverla. The documented history on Earth uh, was around for maybe up to 10,000 years. That's all. That's one millionth of the age of the solar system or so. Um, you know, so why would they visit just at the time that we are starting to document things? It could have been, let's say, 100,000 years ago, a million years ago. You know, if it was a billion years ago, there were only microbes to witness such. A... So the point is, we have a very narrow-minded view. We think that the play that is going on is about us. You know, that we are at the center of the universe. That was Aristotle thought that, um, you know, the Earth-Sun system is special. This is wrong because we know from the Kepler satellite now that about half of the sun-like stars have a planet the size of the Earth at the same separation. We think that the entire universe was designed such that it, we are at the center of it. That's also wrong because 13.8 uh, billion years passed since the Big Bang and we just came at the end. The play is not about us. Sodoma fue destruida por nuestros pecados o hay otra explicación más verosímil? 
It may have been just a fireball from a meteor, a meteor impact. This meteor, this piece of rock was on its path to a collision with Earth long before the city of Sodom was constructed, long before people contemplated out of free will the kind of sins that they will do. So it had nothing to do with what the people were doing. It went on a collision course a long time before that and collided with the earth. And then of course, people think, oh, the play is about us. You know, something bad happened. It's because we did this and that, but it's not. Again and again, humans throughout history thought that it's all about us. You know, it's everything is centered on us. The play is about us. Everything that happens in the sky affects us. No, it's not. We are a small part in that. We are just like one ant out of many on the sidewalk of the Milky Way.